Shabbat Shalom, good right Shabbos. Right. Thank you so much for coming. And please, if I say or do anything wrong, <laughs> don't hesitate to correct me. For example, this is a weekday Sidor, so I'm going to grab one of the blue jobs. And, um, okay. Any, well, I'm going to have a, a, an Ask the Rabbi session, not tonight, but uh, that is scheduled on a date which I uh, conveniently forget. But it's in the bulletin. But let's talk Christmas about day. little known things. Christmas Day, yes, the 25th. Ho, ho, ho. You'll come, we'll spin dreidel, and we'll hang lockers on the tree. Okay. So anyway, I, I wanted to explain to you the sociological implications of Hanukkah. It's really not as uh, heavy as it sounds. Hanukkah was never, ever a very popular holiday in, in the Talmud. And the reason is... And I've said, I think I said this last week. What up-and-coming world power did the Maccabees invite in to help them fight the Syrian Greeks? The Romans. Yes, the Romans, who really weren't the Syrian Greeks. The bad guys of the Hanukkah story are the assimilationist Jews. They're the Jews who are practicing Hellenism. Okay, Hellenism is uh, philosophy and uh, mathematics and... I especially, well, this is kind of icky, but what a lot of young Jewish men did was they underwent very painful operations to eradicate the, um, the, uh, the circumcision so that they would look uncircumcised. Because when you're wrestling naked in the gymnasium, that's uh, apparently the fashion, that's the way to go, okay? Um, interestingly, no circ, uh, non-circumcision, is becoming more and more popular among young Jewish families these days. The No Cirque movement began in California, as do many of these things, and it's uh, quietly made its way east. All right? Just stop me if you have any questions. Well, here we go. Sociological implications. All right. Now, I already said the Talmudic rabbis did not like Hanukkah. They're the ones in the Talmud who either invented or quoted or mentioned that oil story, because the fact is, if you look at the first and second books of Maccabees, and you're not going to find them in a Hebrew Tanakh, because they were never accepted as holy writ into the Hebrew Bible. And the reason is, they glorify the Romans, because whoever wrote them, they were written in Hebrew, later on it was translated into popular Greek, called Koina, and they suck up to the Romans big time. The other, okay, so there we are, we're in the mountains, we're in the hills, we're fighting the Greeks. I already explained last week that the Greek, what was the favored Greek military formation? Thanks. Starts with the PH, the phalanx, very good. Now, attacking a phalanx is like attacking a hedgehog because you've got a whole wall of men with shields and uh, those curious helmets that they wore with the nose cover. And the lance would reach practically to that window because the idea of the phalanx was to poke the other fellow before he could poke at you. That's why the Maccabees, knowing the lay of the land and having a very reliable GPS, went off into the hills and were able to sweep down upon the Greeks when they were not uh, expecting it and attack them. Uh, the Romans, interestingly, were able to defeat the phalanx how did they do that? Okay, here's your phalanx, all the spears pointing in the same direction. The Romans said, gee, that's impressive. Let's go around the side. <laughs> so they did. They flanked the phalanx, and the Greeks did not quite work out. Mm. Well, um, in the books of Maccabees, <clears throat> the reason for the eight days, somebody tell me, eight days of Hanukkah? Miracle of the light working with the one day of Yes, Seven so, day miracle. right, and also so we can outdo the folks who observe Christmas uh, by, by seven extra days. <laughs> but that particular mention, did I say this last week about the Talmud and how that promulgated the oil thing? I did say that. I'll give you a quick overview. The rabbis are having a lovely conversation in the Talmud, as you will find frequently there, and <clears throat> they're talking about what does it take to make Shabbat candles? Do we use tallow? Tallow is pretty disgusting. Do we use wax? Do we use paraffin? Do we use animal fat? And in the midst of this very innocent... 
In the midst of this very innocent conversation about Shabbat candles, somebody, one rabbi, pipes up and says, My Hanukkah. What is Hanukkah? And that is where the oil miracle comes from. Of course, the rabbis take a couple of minutes to say, Oh, don't you know, the Greeks had come into Israel, and Judah Maccabee and his brothers defeated them, and that's why we light candles for eight nights. And now let's get back, they say, to the discussion of Shabbat candles, which is ever so much more important, because Shabbat comes every week, and Hanukkah comes but once a year. <clears throat> you can tell Hanukkah's here because the people are skating at Rockefeller Center, and they've got the uh, wooden soldiers on display. But that's not the reason for the eight days given in the books of Maccabees. It says this. Now, if you're hiding in the hills and sweeping down and attacking and so on, I, that's not something for me, but other folks. If you want to do it, that's fine. Um, then you cannot celebrate a particular holiday which comes in the fall and, has, and lasts for seven days with the addition of one day for, here it comes, Simchat Torah, Little Grass Shack, Sukkot. Coat, yes, thank you, Jason, Sukkot. They couldn't observe Sukkot properly. Sukkot is seven days, plus one day for Simchat Torah is eight days, so after they chased away the Greeks and got the temple back, they were able to observe Sukkot. No oil, no candles, no nothing. That's just how it was. Questions, comments? All right. So all through the period we were living in Europe, Poland, places like that, anybody Polish here? I'm half Polish. Yeah. Any Russians? Yeah. Anybody Russian? Yeah. No, I'm not Russian. I'm, I'm yeah. Austro-Hungarian. Yes, I am a proud expatriate of a country that no longer exists, okay? But it did play a strong role in the First World War. But that's a different story. I had a friend from Europe, it's a big place, and he said to me that what they did on Hanukkah was they gave you out dreidels and nuts and Hanukkah gelt. They did get Hanukkah gelt. That's it. No presents, no menorah in Rockefeller Center, no people driving around with menorahs on the roof of their cars. Well, they didn't have cars, it was public. Okay? When did Hanukkah get the kick in the pants that made it, I'm not going to say the Jewish Christmas, but it's, it's a big deal. I, I bet you, most Jewish kids, if you said to them, what's your favorite holiday, they would say Hanukkah. And I asked that same question of my great nephew a few weeks ago. He was bar mitzvah here, and he said Pesach. I said, really? <laughs> you like Passover? I said, why? He says, because we come to your house and we do the Seder. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Isn't that nice? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, meanwhile, what happens is that after the Second World War, the American Jews or Jewish Americans are desperate, desperate, desperate to be accepted. The B'nai B'rith comes out with booklets that say, we're just like you, and we're moving into Levittown. And uh, you lift up the cross, we lift up the Torah. Come on, it's not the same thing. But again, it was the era of assimilationism. So much so that the Dreydell Company of Patterson, New Jersey, I had a book and I loaned it to somebody and it's gone now because I had a picture of the Dreydell. The Dreydell was four feet tall. It snapped together, I think with Velcro. It had, of course, the letters of the dreidel on each of its four sides, and it was suitable, according to the manufacturer, for piling your children's Hanukkah presents under on the morning of... Oh, yeah. the morning. Oh, yeah. I mean, talk about assimilationism. <laughs> Whoa! Now let's backtrack a little. When did Hanukkah first get started? Hanukkah, then here in America, becomes the Jewish, well, whatever. The... Um, what happens is that when Zionism, there you go, Zionism gets started, and if you're going to be a Zionist, and if you're going to make the desert blossom like the rose, can you be pasty-faced and skinny, or can you, do you have to be muscular and athletic? Yes. So the Zionist leaders said, we've got to get the religious. There are so many religious Jews, we've got to get them to make Aliyah, we've got to get them to move to Israel, and we gotta build them up, because they're going to be, again, making the desert, et cetera, et cetera, and working on kibbutz, and milking cows, which I'm sure is a favorite activity for many of you, or working in the lul. Do you know what the lul is? 
The chicken coop. The chicken coop. All right. Um, well, anyway, they look into Jewish tradition for a holiday that is a religious holiday featuring religious Jews, but they're muscular and athletic. What holiday do they come up with? Hint, we've been talking about it. Right, because the Maccabees were indeed that. They were religious and they were muscular and athletic. Now you may not think so from the little box of chocolate Maccabees, I tell you, but those, those, those chocolate Maccabees are tough. It's like Pesadic chocolate. Have you ever had chocolate on Passover? Have you ever put a piece of Passover chocolate in your hand? Does it melt? No. no. It sits there and says, I'm not really chocolate, I'm Jewish, take that. I dare you to put me in your mouth. You gotta love it, okay? It's Barton's. I remember Barracini. What happened to Barracini? Barton's, Barton stepped on them and there was no more Barracini. And I, I love that Barton sounds so Gentile and Barracini sounds so Italian. I, I think that's great. So that's, that's really when Hanukkah started getting popular again. All right, any questions, any comments? Otherwise, I've got two very depressing stories to tell you. Yes, but they're both feminists. Isn't that yes. also when American bar mitzvahs became this big party? It's yes. Well, I th is that a 1960s thing? It was 50s, started in the 50s. Mm. I actually read about it because there was the history of the Jewish people in this country. Yes. And they they showed the bar mitzvahs and the alley cat and all that stuff. Yes, it's nice to and know that YMCA, which was a big hit in the 70s, is still being played, a, a, a song glorifying for, you know, I have nothing against gay people, my daughter is gay, is still being played at bar mitzvahs. I think that's a very important life cycle event. That and uh, the chicken dance. Da -da 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 I can't find it in Jewish tradition, but it's there somewhere. I'm sorry, Barbara, what was your question? Um, I was just going to say that it's interesting that we use those holidays for assimilation. They're not assimilation per se. It's, it's, it's Jewish, okay, all my life, going to yeshiva, getting, being taught by Orthodox rabbis, I always thought that I was a Jew who happened to be American, a Jew who happened to live in America, a Jew who needs better batteries. Okay, um, thank, thank you, Stuart. And then, and then I went to Israel. I was so fortunate, I spent a year in Israel, 71, 72, and I found out a startling fact. I am not a Jewish, I'm not an American Jew. I'm a Jew who happened, no wait, I'm an American who happens to be Jewish. That's the thing. You don't find that out until you live in a foreign uh, environment for a given amount of time. And it wasn't even the big Zionist letdown. I'm, I'm still a Zionist. You know what a Zionist is? A Zionist is a Jew who pays a second Jew to send a third Jew to live in the land of Israel. Okay, that's the true definition of Zionism. And I'm standing there, and uh, we had Elite Coffee. This was 72. Do you know Elite Coffee? I, I mixed it with hot water, and I made myself a little cup of coffee. And my Israeli roommate, who was a former paratrooper, the toughest of the tough, 21 years old, and studying biologia. I am a junior in college, and I'm there really just to screw around and meet girls. Because even though Bar Ilan was orthodox, it was co ed. I was like, oh my gosh, there are women here. Okay. Um, so I happened to wonder out loud over my little cup of instant coffee, Cafe Names. I said, I wonder if this is real coffee. He jumps up, he throws down his little Japanese made pen and says to me in near perfect English, if you don't like it here, go back where you came from. We don't need you. I said, Yo, I was just criticizing the coffee. I wasn't criticizing the Zionist enterprise, okay? It was that, it was the napkins on the, and the restaurant tables, they were like wax paper. And when Hanukkah came, Hanukkah came, and I was saying, oh man, I love Hanukkah, and, and I don't have a menorah, okay? But, but it's okay, it's okay, because it's Israel, right? I could buy a menorah. Now, we were across the highway, the Kvish Geha, the Geha Highway. I always liked that name, Kvish Geha, because things got squished on the Kvish. All right, the Kvish Geha, and I was going to cross the street and go to B'nai Brock. Have you heard of B'nai Brock? B'nai Brock is a super religious town, okay? 
But a Brock is so religious, how religious is it, that it's second only to Jerusalem and Vatican City. All right? So I go to B'nai Brock, and they were pretty nice to me because they could see, obviously, from the accent and the clothing and the way I walk and the way I sound, I'm a foreigner. I said, Anima chapes menorah, Anima chapes menorah. I'm looking for a menorah. And they keep sending me to a hardware store. <laughs> because in Israel, this is a menorah. What we light is what? It's a Hanukkah. Okay? So that, that was really my tale of Hanukkah. So do I like Hanukkah? I really like it. I'll never forget running home from high school. I would get home at 7.30 p.m. And as soon as I came in the door, my dear old father, let him rest in peace, would welcome me to kindle the lights for the sacred festival. David, light the, light the candles. It's time to light the candles. Man. <laughs> ah, memories. Um, now I understand they're baking latkes. Anybody had a baked latke? Ugh. And last, and uh, junior, oh please, and junior and current events, we talked about uh, falafel latkes. Anybody had a falafel latke? Right. Tempura latke? <laughs> latke right. over easy? Cheese latke. Cheese latke, oh, oh man. Disgusting. Okay, okay. I made broccoli latke. Broccoli latke. Are we cooking them in schmaltz or vegetable oil? Oh. Oil. oil. I was a kid. They believed in schmaltz. Schmaltz. They don't 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 they Jewish men lived to be 50 years old, thank you. They smoked big cigars and ate fatty sandwiches. They died, happy. but they were happy. <laughs> <laughs> Nowadays, God bless them, people are living to be 97 years old, and they're eating what? Brus not Brussels sprouts, what are the kale. sprouts? Kale. 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 kale, oh yes, kale. When I was a kid, kale, and I had a, I had a father-in-law who was a caterer. What did they do with the kale? Decoration. Right. Kale was what they put between the real food on the buffet. Now we're actually eating it. So Aunt Beth takes me to um, Starbucks. This is not a plug. I've been there maybe once in my life. And uh, she had a credit. She got something at work. And she goes and she comes back. She says, i got to find something we can eat. I said, what is this? She goes, it's kale chips. You know what? It tastes like salty fried air. <laughs> Never had anything like that. Look, I want to say... Chag Chanukah Sameach, and of course we've got our bash tomorrow night at 6.30, and just, I, I hope you're having a good holiday. Thank you so much. Please be careful driving in the snow. Okay. Okay. Can I just add one more thing? Yes. We were talking about assimilation. I want to tell my stories. Oh, well. Yeah. Okay. Because I, I work with JCC. And I've worked with them almost my whole life. Jewish community Jewish centers. Jewish community centers are the New York, we call them the Y. Okay? Yes. They, you know why they were invented? Why? It was from, it was the Jewish, Jewish Welfare Board, which is part of the JWB, yes. Because Jews had been assimilated so much from the settlement houses mm. that they were losing, when they moved out to the burbs, they were losing a sense of Jewishness. Yes. So they created these Ys. Yes. Where you send Jewish kids when they're not going to Hebrew school. To right. get encultured into the Jewish culture. Yes. So it was like you were assimilated, but were also. Right. The, the Jewish Center was actually a creation of the 1920s. It was Rabbi Dr. Mordechai Kaplan. And um, they referred to it as a, a shul mitapul. So. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Yes, yes. Is that a mix up? Uh, it could be, but, but only, you had to wear a bathing suit. Yes. Yes. Only when I, I don't know if it was single sex what, uh, bathing. I have time for one more story. Yeah. A couple of stories. There's one which is martyrdom. That's what we get from two Maccabees, second book of Maccabees, martyrdom. We don't have to talk about that. But this is the story of Judith and Holofernes. Anybody know them? Judith and Holofernes. Holofernes is a mighty Greek general, although significantly he has a Persian name. I guess he was trying to blend in. And uh, Holofernes falls in love with Judith, who is the daughter of the high priest. And he says to her, oh, Judy, honey, sweetie, baby, I love you so much. Uh, let's go out. And she says, no, I cannot go out with you, for I am the daughter of the high priest, and you are a smarmy general. This is not a knock on the military, really. I have friends who are in the military. God bless them. Okay. He says, well, at least invite me over for dinner. And she says, oh, okay. 
Then she goes home and she prepares all kinds of dishes with cheese, okay? Uh, different kinds of cheese. What you got? Cheese. Mozzarella. Mozzarella. Goat cheese. Goat cheese. Goat cheese. cheese. Goat cheese. Yes. Feta. 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 Really, feta, the secret weapon of cheeses. And this guy comes to her house and he sits down and she brings on the cheese. And he says, where's the kale? <laughs> um, yeah. Right, right. And uh, he gobbles it up and he says, I'm really, really thirsty, especially from the feta. I uh, got something to drink around here. So she brings him wine. And because he's very military indeed, and he saw a funny thing happen on the way to the forum, he uh, drinks wine in quantity and, fall, and falls asleep. She takes out his big old shiny sharp sword and she chops off his head. Nice. Now, this, is, this is in the book of Maccabees. Yes. Wonderful stuff. Okay, I don't recommend this for a first date, by the way. <laughs> if you want him to leave, just open the door and go like this. Don't go there for dinner. Right, right, and watch out for the cheese. And take your lactose pill. All right, so she takes the grizzly skull and puts it in a gunny sack. because See, that's why you should always have a gunny sack around the house. And schleps it over her back, little, little skinny girl like that. Uh, she worked out, you know, she went to uh, LA Fitness. Hawaii. She went to the James DC. <laughs> and uh, his sentries, his soldiers are all standing on the walls of Jerusalem. And she goes, hey, sentries! And they say, yes, can we help you? And she takes out the skull and waves it at them. And they all drop down their, drop their weapons and run away. Believe it? Absolutely not. <laughs> but you see, the point is, a woman is a heroine, okay? And there are paintings, as a matter of fact. I think uh, Caravaggio did that. Very, very easy. Okay, I gotta love Caravaggio. Yes, do you love Caravaggio? I was scratching my ear. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> Caravaggio used to scratch his ear a lot. So, Rabbi, she was pre Lorena Bobbitt. Yes, yes. And she aimed a little higher. Okay, well, Shabbat Shalom, good Shabbos. We're going to light candles. And let's see. Um, 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 ooh, Sherry, would you like candles? Oh, please rise. Women kind of go in this direction. First, what do we light first? The Hanukkah candles or the Shabbat candles? Yes, why do we light the Hanukkah candles first? Right, yes. Okay, very good. All of a sudden, all of All right. <laughs> Well, no, you have to light those. Yes, first we're going to turn briskly in a clockwise direction. Oh, okay. All right. Let's let's do the blessing for the Hanukkah candles. And isn't this the first time we've lit the candles as a group? Yeah. So we can, I throw in a Shechayano, I do love Shechayano. Baruch Atar Anai, Eloheinu Melech Olam, Asher Kiddushan of the Mitzvot of its Ivanu, L'Hadlik Ne'er Shechayano Hanukkah. Baruch Atar Anai, Eloheinu Melech Olam, Shechayano Nisim L'Hotzeinu, Ayamim, and we'll do Shechayano, I know it's the, uh, okay, uh, sixth night, <laughs> but, but this is the first time we're doing it as a group, okay? Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu Melech Olam, Shechayano, supposed to use them. I know they're electric, but if they were real candles, you're not supposed to use them for reading or any secular purpose, and women are not supposed to um, work during the time that the Hanukkah candles are burning. That's why we invented the electric manoa. 15 minutes. 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Okay, let's light the Shabbat candles. Thank you, Sherry, for your patience. Is that? 
Okay, we wave our hands over the candles, bringing Shabbat, cover our eyes and sing. Baruch Atadonai, Eloheinu Melech Olam, Asher Kedushan Mitzvotam et Sihanu, Baruch Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
All right, please remain standing. We'll move directly to the Borchu. And the Borchu is on page 28. And we'll ask uh, the Rumax to honor us by opening the ark. reading I thought that was appropriate is on the lower left hand corner of 28 light and darkness because this is the time of year where it gets dark early and certainly Hanukkah uh, has some antecedents in terms of the winter solstice okay light and darkness night and day we marvel at the mystery of stars together moon and sky sand and sea we marvel at the mystery of sun Twilight, high noon, dusk and dawn, though we are mortal, we are creation's crown. Flesh and bone, steel and stone, we dwell in fragile, temporary shelters. Grant steadfast love, compassion, grace, sustain us, O God, our origin is dust. Majesty, mercy, love endure, we are a little lower than the angels. Resplendent skies, sunset, sunrise, the grandeur of creation lifts our lives. Evening darkness, morning dawn, renew our lives as you renew all time. <laughs> Let's read the English paragraph. 
You shall love Adonai your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. And these words which I command you this day you shall take to heart. Teach them diligently to your children. Recite them at home and away, night and day. I am as a sign upon your hand and as a reminder above your eyes. Inscribe them upon the doorposts of your homes and upon your gates. All right, continuing silently to the bottom of page 30. Continuing on page 32, in the middle of the page, and as I explained last week, this is the time of year when the Mircha gets an additional meaning, that uh, the Mem, the Kaf, the Bet, and the Yud stand for Maccabi. Also members of the congregation, um, we pray for their health, and we'll go around and people can mention names. Yes. Dr. Zeng. Oh, I'm sorry, no, I'm fine. Oh, thank God. Yes. Before Shlema. Okay. Before Shlema. Yes. All right, coming around the front. Martin Baker. Before Shlema. Warren Mauer. Rafua Shlema. Yes, I'll get there. Thank you. Rafua Shlema. Yes. Okay. All right. Yes. Meryl Blau. Rafua Shlema. Rafua Shlema. Josh Blau. Rafua Shlema. Reese Blau. Rafua Shlema. Aiden Boyd. Rafua Shlema. Yes. Yes. Rebecca Weinstein. Rafua Shlema. Yes, sir. Rafua Shlema. Mm-hmm. Yes. Joe Arnold Before Schlemmer. Before Schlemmer. Yes. Okay, coming around. No? Good. Okay. Bruce Martin. Before Schlemmer. Dr. Francis Budden. Before Schlemmer. My sister Amy Rose. Before Schlemmer. James Basmajian. Before Schlemmer. Inez Asher. Before Schlemmer. And Nancy Donnelly. Before Schlemmer. Okay. All right, let's read together the English paragraph on the top left of 33. Help us, Adonai, to lie down in peace and awaken us again, our sovereign, to life. Spread over us your shelter of peace. Guide us with your good counsel. Save us because of your mercy. Shield us from enemies and pestilence, from starvation, sword, and sorrow. Remove the evil forces that surround us. Shelter us in the shadow of your wings, O God, who watches over us and delivers us, our gracious and merciful ruler. Guard our coming and our going. Grant us life and peace now and always. Spread over us the shelter of your peace. Praise you, Adonai, who spreads the shelter of peace over us, over all his people Israel, over Jerusalem and the entire world. Yahushalayim, Yahkol Haulam Kulo, 
You've got the Al Hanisim, which is the prayer for Hanukkah. And after 38, you may be seated.
Yellow's great 
book is closed. If you're not saying Mourner's Kaddish, you may be seated. Please be seated. This time we'll hear a few words from our wonderful president. Good Shabbos, everyone. It's so lovely to be with you as it is every Friday night. But this one feels very special because of the Hanukkah lights, because of new friends and old friends and wonderful friends who've come back second and third times. And it means a tremendous amount to us. And new friends, especially, who it means so much to stand for particular prayers in our service. And when standing is not so easy, and when it's done, it touches us very, very deeply. My hat's off. Very much so in a sweet Shabbos. I want to let you know that tomorrow night we are having our Hanukkah big party. So you will see when you go in for your coffee and cake tonight, you'll see tables that are decorated in the colors of the Hanukkah candles. Um, that's for tomorrow. Don't are, sit in them. <laughs> them. <laughs> I was tying bowls a little bit yesterday, and Laura Durant was, our wonderful Laura was tying bowls for hours yesterday. So there are ta William has set up tables further toward the, the uh, big sanctuary for tonight. But um, we have ordered plenty of food. Our reservations are made. We cannot wait to have you there. We will be taking one or two at the door. If it's the last minute and you want to come, please do. You are so welcome. So, so welcome. Um, tomorrow, after our more traditional services, Rabbi has his class. Well, again, we're doing me doubt. We're going to finish it up. That's uh, good traits, good personality traits. And 